Good morning. This is Law Academy. So, on the group, we have just two questions. And uh, the first question is uh, Are there plugins that are built specially for mastering? And are there ones that are built specially for mixing? Or are they the same? We, can we just use any plugins? Uh, the answer is yes, there are plugins that are built for mixing and there are ones that are built for mastering. Okay, so the second question said, uh, it was asking, how can we identify these plugins? How can we know this plugin is a mastering plugin and how can we know the other one is for mixing? The first way we can detect this is uh, when you read about the plugin, you know, when they build the plugin, there are always documents that comes out with it. So if you are very detailed with the plugins that you use, or probably you purchase them, you must have read about them and know oh, these are special mastering tools. This are uh, this one is a mixing plugin. You understand? That is one. The second way you can uh, identify this is that sometimes they even embed it in the name. Okay? So, so, so mastering. So, so, so mastering suit. So, so, so. You understand? So, not all the time, but sometimes they embed it in their name. Then you just know this is for mixing and this is for mastering. That's the second way to identify these plugins. The third way to identify them, maybe probably you just bump on a plugin on your system and uh, you want to, you know, you don't know if this is a mastering plugin or a mixing plugin. Now, what you should check out is the response of that plugin. The response of a mastering plugin is always gentle. Is gentle on whatever sound you are applying them to okay for example you you apply a 2 dB boost or 3 dB boost or even 5 dB boost or or cut on a particular frequency or maybe on a threshold and all that you see that the effect on that sound if the effect is gentle and you feel like you want to drag it the more, you understand it, you are probably using a mastering plugin. Okay? But for a mixing plugin, any uh, little change that you make in your plugin, you easily hear the difference coming out on the sound. Do you get the point? Okay. So the another thing is that you know, even if you have a, a mastering plugin, uh, plugins are better than each other. You know, there are companies that build plugins, and there are some that build the same kind of plugin, but you can't compare the quality to each other. So you can tell me that a particular EQ and another EQ uh, are the same, okay? No, a, a particular one might have a better quality than the other. Okay, for example, there is a, a popular plugin that everybody uses, a far fitter. It is uh, very good. There are so many features in it, you know. But there are some older plugins that when you use them side by side with far fitter, you will never use far fitter again. Okay, so the quality of these plugins varies there are plugins okay for example there are eqs that is being sold for three dollars and there are eqs that are being sold for twenty dollars you can tell me that the quality of the eq that is that was free or being sold for two dollars will give you the same quality as the one that is being sold for twenty dollars okay so all these things you have to put in mind so even if it is a mastering plugin if it is a ship mastering plugin a plugin that is not well built it might still respond like a mixing plugin okay 
So if you have a quality mastering plugins, just like the BX or all this uh, BX or okay, you can see in the name now BX Mastering Desk, BX True Peaks. You understand? For example, let me pull up the uh, Mastering Desk. So BX Mastering Desk, okay, from Brainworks. Now. This is a uh, is a mastering plugins because it has been embedded in you see analog mastering system. You can see it analog mastering system. So it has been embedded in the name, so you easily know that uh, this plugin is a uh, is a mastering plugin. So uh, the uh, people that build this is Plugin Alliance. You can get uh, this from them. It's a very good plugin. So. I just show that up to show you that there are some plugins that the name will tell you if there are mastering or plugin or a mixing suit. Okay, so uh, I'm trying to. Oh yes, so all these uh, BX uh, plugin. This in this area you have uh, the tone which is similar to the equalizer. You have the bass, the mid, the treble, and the presses. So using these two now, you can tell me that uh, uh, the quality I get from this plugin, this EQ session, will give me the same result as uh, using this. Uh, this is a step plugin that comes with uh, with Cubase and is is an EQ. So using this will give me a better quality. Okay. Now comparing, let me think of this. Not to overload my uh, CPU. So there is uh, an EQ. This is a. Uh, frequency okay so you can tell me that using this and using this vocal EQ from uh, auto tune and Antias so you can not tell me that uh, the quality of this and this will be the same no because this is far expensive it comes in a bundle and it's sold for around five hundred uh, five hundred dollars okay so this and this this we, if I have this and this I can't use this I would rather use this because the quality this will give me is far better than this okay so take note you you might be why I'm showing this is that you might be using a mastering plugins and that mastering plugin is still responding like a mixing plugin okay but if you have or low quality plugins the mastering plugins we apply more gentle effect or response on whatever you are applying them to than the mixing plugins and if you have uh, tons of uh, quality plugins okay so if you compare their sounds you will notice that some are very gentle some are very expressive then you know the one that is more gentle is probably a mastering plugin. So I'll just demonstrate this. I have uh, some mixing plugin. Frequency is a mixing plugin, and we have the catch off is a mixing plugin. So I'm using equalizer as a demonstration. This is an equalizer, and this is also an equalizer, and they are both mixing equalizer. They are both mixing plugin. Okay, so. I've applied uh, I've applied a uh, 5 dB boost around 3 kilohertz at exactly 3, three kilohertz frequency I applied a uh, 5 dB boost okay so with it and without let's see how it it works on the sound so we have the sound without the EQ so with it without it okay with it without it so you can see that 
the change is noticeable at 5 dB, 3 kilowatts. Then I did the same thing on a catch off EQ. Okay. So I apply a boost of uh, 5 dB. 5 dB at 3 kilowatts. Okay. So let's see the response. Without it, with it, without it, with it. So this is also a missing EQ, you understand? So you easily get the difference in the sound. Now let's look at uh, the Nifsoma. The Nifsoma is built for mastering. It's a mastering plugin from Plugin Alliance. And I have done the same thing. I've, I have a 5 dB boost at uh, around 3 kilohertz. Okay? 3 kilohertz, then 5 dB boost. Let's see what happens. Without it, with it. it so you can see the response of this is clearly different from the one that the catch off and the frequency is giving you now listen to it again now let me switch to the catch off and you see you can see the, the treble coming out well here with 5 dB boost but with the same 5 dB boost you see what is happening here even almost the, the 5 dB is even almost at the maximum in the scale that is being given you understand but on the catch off you can even go more and more and more you see if I increase the you can go as far as 30 dB okay but for a mastering EQ you see that even the maximum is around 7 dB that's the maximum you can go. Do you get it? So the thing, the the the, the reason is that on a mastering plugin, you are not expected to do much. Okay. So if you have done much, if if, if you finish a particular mastering and uh, a, a mastering a particular audio, and you revert back to compare with the original, and you kind of or feel that you are listening to a, a totally different sound. That means you have the, the mastering is poor. It sh it shouldn't change your mix. Mastering plugins should not change your mix, but it should enhance the quality of your mix. Okay, so you are not expected to pull up a change that is very drastic when you are doing mastering. You are applying a gentle change to enhance or correct some lapses that you have in the mix okay that is why these plugins are built that way you have a gentle effect coming on whatever you are applying them to then you personally you are not expected to even apply much changes you understand is a slight maybe 3 db 2 db negative 2 db negative 3 db you understand you are just going gently gently on the sun just to have some touch or to enhance some frequencies to give some dynamics and all that you understand so easily you'll be able to know by the response of the plugin you know this plugin is a mastering plugin okay let's look at the tr5 the tr5 uh, uh, <coughs> Which is the T Rack uh, equalizer? I've done the same thing. Let's see what it is. Without it, with it, do you get it? Now, this this is a mastering tool. Is a mastering EQ, but the response is a bit higher, more responsive than the audio Nifsoma. So, 
it means that this audio nifsoma is a better mastering EQ than the TR5. Are you getting the point? So you, you can use this TR5 for mixing and you still get your a good result on mixing, okay? But the nifsoma, it's better used for mastering because you hardly notice your change when you are using it for mixing because you want some drastic movement, drastic change, drastic dynamics on your mix. Are you getting the point? Though they are both mastering plugins, but it, it, one is even more responsive than the other because they come from different companies. Okay? So, the one that is less responsive is a better mastering plugin. So, plugins qualities are different from each other so sometimes you might conf confuse or uh, uh, mastering plugins with a mixing plugin are you getting the point all right so with this i think i've answered the two questions and the second question as a can we just use any of them yes depending on what you want to achieve so if you are uh, mixing you should be using a mixing plugin but sometimes you might just want a slight touch or a slight changes after you might have completed your mix, okay? Maybe you just know that ah, if I can have a little boost of this or apply a little compression to this, you don't want that uh, whatever you want to apply to be drastic, you understand? But you are still on the mix. So you can apply a mastering plugin to achieve that. So you can use a mastering plugin while you are mixing. Okay? So it depends on the case. And when you are mastering too, you can also use mixing plugins while you are mastering. But you must know that a mixing plugin is more responsive. So the change that you are applying, instead of applying for example, you want to have a negative 3 dB cut at a particular frequency, then you consider having a negative 1 dB cut using a mixing plugin. But using a mastering plugin, you can still have your negative 3 dB cut. You understand? It will be giving you a similar result with the mixing plugin that you are having a negative 1 uh, dB cut. So with this, I hope you understand uh, the explanation and all this plugin. So read about your plugins, the plugin you are using to differentiate them. Look at the name very well. If you have been given a clue, if it is a mixing or mastering plugin, then third way, l check out the responsiveness of that plugin or whatever you are applying them to. Thank you. And I will see you next time. Bye.